Welcome to Blueprint IoT. In this video, we will take a look on temperature sensors as well as on some humidity sensors. So let's get started right away with two very typical sensors you see in a lot of Arduino or Raspberry Pi projects. Those two sensors are both part of the DHT series. The blue one is the DHT11 and the white one is the DHT22. Both the DHT11 and the DHT22 can measure temperature. Both models come also with a humidity measurement function, but the measurement ranges and the accuracy is quite different. So let's take a look on the details. The DHT11 can measure everything between 20 and 90% relative humidity. So every time we're talking about humidity, we're actually talking about relative humidity in the air. So please don't confuse this with moisture of soil or anything else. This measurement range comes at an accuracy of plus minus 5%. For the temperature range, the DHT11 comes with 0 to 50 degrees Celsius, which is probably fine for all indoor projects. And since the temperature range is kind of okay, the accuracy is as well, it's plus minus 2 degrees, so for non-critical applications probably enough. Looking at your projects, of course, the voltage levels are also important and the DHT11 comes at 3.3 volts as well as 5 volts acceptable. So while the key performance of the DHT11 is kind of okay, the DHT22 is really like the next level or the higher quality or higher capability sensor. Starting with the humidity, we can measure between 0 and 100% at an accuracy of plus minus 2%. So that's already way better than the DHT11. For the temperature, the difference is even more significant. We can measure from minus 40 to 80 degrees at plus minus 0.5 degrees. Talking about voltage, we can accept 3.3 volts as well as 5 volt tolerant. So that are all the measurement ranges and accuracies on the paper, but please let me note that the real world performance of those DHT sensors can perform very, very badly. And I'm not talking about those values can be reached or can't be reached. I'm talking about reliability. A quite common fault of those sensors is that you lose the humidity measurement capabilities. Or in case of the DHT22, I had quite sometimes the case that the humidity will just sit there at 99% and there won't be any change. So from a reliability standpoint, I really wouldn't recommend you those sensors, even though they are quite cheap as long as you purchase them at AliExpress or one of those other platforms. But be aware that you buy a sensor that's made for indoor use, that's made for very low accuracy, depending on your choice of the DHT11 or the DHT22, and be aware that the reliability is just not really given at all. In case you decide anyway for the DHT because it's a non-critical project or it's just for a trial, let me mention the communication protocol, which is a kind of a one-wire protocol. So it's not the official one-wire protocol from Dallas. It's kind of faking this one-wire protocol. So you can use all your one-wire libraries. It will match, but it's not the officially approved and copyright aligned protocol. And in case you wonder why there are four pins for one-wire protocol, that's actually because one of the pins is not used at all. It's just there, but it has no function at all. So that's also kind of strange. But let's move on to the next sensor, which is the DS18B20. The DS18B20 is actually manufactured and designed by Dallas Semiconductors. So those are exactly the guys who invented the one wire protocol. And in case you never heard of Dallas, this might be because they've been bought by Maxim Integrated. Maybe those are more familiar to you. And in case those are not familiar to you, that's maybe because they actually sold the whole thing to analog devices. So Dallas is nowadays indirectly owned by analog devices, but this doesn't change the fact that the sensor itself was designed from Dallas and all the data sheets and so on, whatever you search is probably provided by Dallas. But let's take a look on the performance of the sensor. The DS18B20 can measure the temperature, but it actually can't measure the humidity. So it's a pure temperature sensor. Nevertheless, the temperature performance is quite good. We can measure from minus 55 to 125 degrees Celsius. And that's basically a temperature range which is applicable for every kind of scenario outdoors. 
No matter how cold it gets, this sensor will work and no matter how hot it gets, even inside a housing or potentially also on an electric motor or whatever kind of material or object you're measuring, this sensor will keep up the pace. So 125 degrees is really quite good as long as we're not talking about any oven application or whatever. Accuracy is also quite good with plus minus 0.5 degrees at least between minus 10 and plus 85 degrees. Below that and above that the accuracy is getting a bit worse. So next up is the voltage levels and the 3.3 volts are accepted as well as its 5 volt tolerant. And while looking on those pictures of the sensor, there are actually different kind of housings available. So the first one you see is probably the most typical one and the most easy to get one, but there are also the encapsulated versions. So down there you see this waterproof sensor. So that's actually a DS18B20 sensor inside this stainless steel tube, which is then potted into waterproof material and everything is attached to a wire which comes normally at one meter but there are also versions with three or five meters available. Talking about those encapsulated versions please be aware that you can't be sure what's actually inside the capsule because you cannot really see inside. Even if you try to open those capsules there's so much potting material and the sensor itself the chances to get a clear reading what's on the sensor element itself is quite difficult. So in case you buy from a cheap or sketchy place, you might run into the risk of a very unreliable sensor. So I've seen those sensors, those encapsulated versions failing in the field for many, many times. So you really want to make sure to buy those encapsulated versions on a reliable and trustworthy platform. But overall, the original DS80B Trendy sensor is a very reliable one and a quite common sensor to use. Before we move on to the next sensor I want to mention three more things. First of all the communication protocol is of course the Dallas one wire protocol and this time it's the real one and in case you're wondering what's the resolution of the data and everything it can be changed in the settings from 8-bit to 12-bit if necessary. And the last thing I want to mention is that there's also another housing type available, an SMD housing. So in case you want to mount this sensor down on your circuit board, you can also get the SMD version. In case you're just asking you the question, what the hell is SMD and what's the other one? Check out our video about printed circuit boards, where we also discuss the difference between SMD and THT devices. So let's move on to our final sensor, which is the BME 280. On the right hand side, you can see the actual sensor element. And on the left hand side, you can see the breakout board. The reason is that this sensor is made for the smartphone and wearable industry. So those guys normally mount this directly on their PCBs. So in case you want to use it in your project, you probably won't solder this very tiny sensor element on your board. You probably want to have a breakout board, which is available from various manufacturers and platforms. So the BME 280 is manufactured by Bosch. And this company is not just manufacturing fridges and power tools. They are also a big automotive supplier and also have a separate sensor department. And we should also mention that those guys have a pretty funny marketing department in case you remember the like a Bosch videos about IoT, which I will link you right here. But let's take a look on the performance of the sensor. So first of all, it can measure temperature as well as humidity. And that's actually a new thing. It can also measure air pressure. So this sensor is actually providing you with all the functionality you need to build a weather station with only one sensor. But let's dig in deeper. The air pressure measurements ranging from 300 to 1100 hectopascal. So you won't probably see anything different if you use it out there in the field as a weather station. The humidity measurement ranges from everything between 0 and 100%, so that's pretty good. And this comes at an accuracy of plus minus 3%. And the probably most important temperature measurement gets really accurate between minus 40 and 85 degrees at plus minus 0.5 degrees Celsius. So that's pretty precise and pretty useful in case you want to see some early trends that the temperature is rising or falling. Talking about power supply, we will support 3.3 volts, 
five volts, it's kind of a different story. By default, the sensor element itself is not accepting five volts, but there are certain breakout boards that accept five volts as well. Please make really sure that you bought the five volt breakout board in case you need it. Talking about what to order, the BME 280 is kind of a more expensive sensor. So also maybe an option to buy them via AliExpress. But honestly, talking about prices is not making any sense right now because the market is still going crazy. But there is one more thing I want to mention. There is also a BMP 180 available. So the naming is quite similar. It's BMP 180 and not BME 280. And the BMP 180 is significantly cheaper. So don't get fooled and order the BMP 180 by mistake because this one can only measure temperature and the air pressure, but not the humidity. So kind of strange because normally you would expect something like temperature and humidity and not temperature and air pressure. So for me, air pressure, it's always like a plus, but not the necessity. So make sure to get the BME 280 in case you want to have this humidity measurement. Taking a look on the communication protocols, the BME 280 supports the SPI protocol as well as I2C. But that's only for the chip by the manufacturer. If you buy those breakout boards as displayed here, those will only support I2C and no SPI, as you can already see from the connection points. Using the I2C communication, there is one more hint from my side. In case you want to buy several of those and hook them up to the same bus, the same I2C bus, they have hard coded addresses. So in case you buy three of them, it's quite likely that they have the same address. So using a bus system, it gets a bit complicated if you're calling one specific address and three sensors answer or non answers because everybody's confused who is supposed to answer. So that can get complicated. Of course, you can change this in the settings of the sensor itself. But to do so, you really have to dig in deep. So there are two workarounds. First of all you can see those little soldering pads on the sensor sometimes you can just solder in a bridge between two pads and then change to another i2c address or maybe also disconnect a certain connection on the breakout board to get another i2c address but as soon as you want to use more than two or three sensors in one system it really is end of line so what you can do as a second workaround is just establish another I2C bus. So normally you have one or two I2C buses as hardware pins, but you can normally always establish additional I2C buses as virtual I2C buses. So you just emulate another I2C bus on a normal GPIO pin. So those I2C buses may have a lower transmission speed, but it's normally still pretty good for just a temperature reading. And of course you're undermining this principle of a bus system where everything is hooked up to one wire. But most of the time, this is the easier workaround and also taking into account that this bus system, like everything at one wire, is only useful if those sensors are physically located in the same area. If a bunch of sensors is handed right hand side from your central processing unit and another bunch is located the left hand side of your central processing unit, it's making no big difference to running a second bus line. In case you want to know more about bus systems and how they work, let me know in the comments and we will prepare a separate video for this. So this was our brief walkthrough of all those temperatures and humidities and also air pressure sensors. I think that's all you need to get started with your first projects. So in case this information was helpful to you, make sure to like the video and subscribe for more content like this. In case you want to have some deep dives into one of the sensors we just talked about, about wiring and how to set them up, let me know in the comments and we will prepare a video about this. And in case you want to have those information from the video in a document for yourself, feel free to capture it in your own screenshot or sign up on Patreon where you can support our work and also get access to all this information in PDF and table format to use it in your own documentation. So thanks for watching and see you next time.